Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to a special Dugongs and Sea Dragons Let's Play. Uh, we are playing Subnautica. Uh, we are all in one form or another uh, in the marine biology or marine conservation fields, which Except is what's up with Joel. this Let's Play. Uh, so I'm mostly, married, uh, married I have one. played the game no. or have not played the game before. I'm totally new to it. Aaron and uh, Andrew uh, have played the game. And just up top, this is going to be mostly us chatting. <laughs> yeah, we are so going to talk in... over all of the plot and discoveries, <laughs> so just eat it. Yes. So if you're looking for like a soothing Let's Play or something that's a little bit more of a game movie, this is not the Let's Play to watch. This is but marine you... biologists yeah. chat over drinks and a game. Uh, and with that, uh, is there anything else to add, folks? Uh, yeah, if, I, I just want to say that if you do want a to experience all the plot points of this game, maybe play the game yourself. It's a great Yay! game. Highly recommend. Yeah. There was some talk of us oh, uh, and doing just actual... You're showing up for the first time and have not discovered any do dogs and sea dragons content. Hi, I'm Francis. I am a, a marine biologist. Specifically, I study marine predator ecology. Well, we kind of talked over you right there. What's up? Yeah, I'm not sure that Francis can hear me. Francis, can you hear Joel? No. I didn't you think need to. Could. You need to unmute him. Yeah, we all know. Yeah. Okay, working on that. For some reason, oh, and we're we'll professionals, you guys. Yeah. Joel is our everyman who is going to keep us honest when we go off on weird marine biology tangents and say, "Yes, but what actually is that in normal speak?" Yeah, All right, uh, testing. Can Hello, you can you hear me now? Yeah, Hello? yeah, yeah. All right. you. Good, good. I'm here more for uh, the video games than the uh, marine biology. Kind of married into marine biology. You did. There Damn was some man, talk of. The there was some talk of us actually doing big plot oh, points uh, today. Yeah, so uh, we have two options for our game. I want to do both uh, at some point, but. Uh, we can go do a, a big plot thing, or we can go and find a, a fun new biome. I'm a big more. fan of new biomes, but just because people were crotchety last time, we probably could do the plot point. Is this, it, by plot point, is is this the rad plot point, or is this the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll stop we're, hearing the... I want to do the... both. I want to do both, so... All right. Um, Francis, which would you prefer, plot or biome? You guys, to guide me on this journey. Both are really fun. So I'll I will leave it up to you. But you guys should also introduce yourselves for people oh. who maybe oh, didn't yeah. watch our first let's play. We didn't do that. Did no. we even do that on our first let's play? We, no. I'm sure we I did. Think we, yeah, I think no. we did. We did something. maybe. If not, you go first. Uh, I already I already You're I introduced dead. myself. And then you guys yelled at me. Yeah, and then we had time to listen. You guys stopped it. <laughs> Rex. Uh, well, hi, well, I'm Joel Anderson. I'm married to Aaron. I'm an accountant by trade, so I don't really have a lot to say about marine biology, but I really do, do love Subnautica. Hi, I'm Aaron Anderson, and I'm a marine, <laughs> marine biologist and an illustrator, and I and an author. I have I a book say. out. With a really cool review. A science fiction novel. Memoir of a Mad Scientist out now. Her brain right. uh, I'm did, Andrew Corblat <laughs> and I'm a marine biologist, science communication <laughs> cowboy doing cool stuff. I have a podcast named oh, yeah. Ocean Science Radio, and uh, I also really love my dogs. How are your dogs? Are they adorable? They're both, they're both adorable. Twiggy's been having some little hip dysplasia problems, which is like apparently consistent with Chihuahuas, but you know that is what it is. And if okay. you enjoy our dulcet tones you can find us all on dugongs and sea dragons which is a, a dungeons and dragons actual play podcast featuring um marine biologists and around themes of marine conservation and you can find me and andrew on uh 
Ocean Science Radio. Ocean Science Radio. Aaron is the one actually playing this game, in case that wasn't uh, clear. Hello. Yes, and uh, she's doing some. This is some sort of resource management shenanigans. Our garden's looking nice. It is, and now it looks even better because we got a cool poster. Oh, look at that! We're so cool. <laughs> we have a poster. <laughs> yep. How did we fabricate? Egg. No, it's you don't fabricate the posters. You find them. They're Easter eggs. You find them. Okay. I took up value. I was wondering uh, how many, space. how many, how many things we had to harvest to get dyes to then fabricate uh, yep. a, a poster for a uh, in-universe IP. Yep. All right. Our garden so, does look nice, though. It looks much better than... Yeah, I, I have an air plant that I don't think is... I can't tell if it's alive or not. Aww. Yeah, that's the thing about it. air plants. I keep no, watering don't keep, it. No, <laughs> don't keep watering air plants. Air plants will die if you water them too much. No, I... I look, it's in no danger of that. All right. You do you. All right. I let it soak, like, for a couple hours once a week. Let's talk about ocean stuff. Yeah. Let's talk about ocean stuff. So, uh, you, okay, our choices are new biome or new plot point? Yes. Yeah. Which would you prefer? If Andrew's voted for new biome. We're going to do I both, like so I don't thought... worry. Okay. I trust your I trust your leadership, Aaron. It's not a vote. I cede my vote to you. <laughs> no, that's not a vote. I'm voting I'm voting as Aaron for my representative. This is a this is a <laughs> republic. <sighs> Actual Not a straight democracy. democracy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we are a direct democracy. Well. Boo. Andrew had a vote, and Francis voted not to vote. So we'll go to the new biome, and then we'll do the plot thing. I think it's in this direction. Ooh, what's the stripey thing? Stripey thing. There was a stripey thing. All those points. I think it was them away. Oh, okay. We've seen them before. Yep. Shark cool rose. Looking, Maximum depth reached. I don't know how deep we're going to be able to go uh, too far down, but... Uh, crush depth of 200 meters, it says, on yeah. screen. Have you ever dove uh, 200 meters, Francis? Uh, no, because um, without a really fancy... Depth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not a thing you can just... Pop on a scuba tank and do. What would happen to your body if you did that? Well, you just compress like a soda can or well, a styrofoam mostly, head. You're you're mostly made of non-compressible stuff. Is the thing. Most of your body is solids or fluids, um, which don't compress. Um, it's the air spaces that you have to worry about in terms of pressure. And usually in normal sort of diving scenarios, that's not that much of an issue. You just, you're breathing gas at the pressure that you're at to make sure that's all key dory. Um, Aaron, I don't think that's a friend. I think you should go away from that. Yep, run. Yeah, it's roaring at you. It wants to play with you in a very different way than you want to play with it. So, Francis, one of the things about this game is you will find that, like, you dive down to very, very deep or possibly hazardous areas to you, and you get out of your Wait, we didn't build that. Unit. What's this no. thing? No. Oh, this is, what is this? This is a discovery. <gasps> what is this thing? Oh, maybe How did it get it? here? Is, why are... It looks like there's just circuit boards straight up in the water, which seems you, like not helpful. Did you also notice how it also indicates that there is some sort of like plant life growing off of it? Indicating yeah, like, that yes, it's like It's oh. been here for a while. Yeah. Although bio can happen remarkably quickly, depending on the environment that you're in. How fast can biofouling happen? I don't have a specific but, like, I know people that sail regularly, like, try to clean their boats, like, once a week or once every couple weeks yep. to keep it real nice and smooth. So it can happen, you know, it's not like it's necessarily that means it's uber ancient. Also, oh, yeah. quick, uh, 
uh, quick thing to note. We are uh, in our off hours, and while we are good at our respective fields, we don't know everything. In fact, we know... Enough we to get in trouble. We don't know more stuff than we know. So We know that we don't know a lot of things. Please don't take anything that we say here as gospel truth. Please verify your information and consume media responsibly. This has been... <laughs> <laughs> we, we are not correct on every fact that we say on this thing. Disclaimer. <laughs> but we try. Yeah. Ah, so we have some sort of uh, alien yep. looking hieroglyphs. This is very Matrix Mass Effect looking stuff. Ooh, yeah, yeah Mass Effect. Very Mass Effect. Of a metal alloy with unprecedented integrity. No matches. Integrity. Performing structural analysis. I'm just glad that they uh, didn't what, try what I think this culture anything. is, they're really fond of squares. Mm. And, like, absolutely a lot of right angles in our architectural mm. aesthetic. I mean, would you prefer, like, non Euclidean? Mm. Which is a fancy oh, way to say <laughs> circles. It's a right. fancy <laughs> way to say <laughs> circles. Lovecraftian <laughs> angles. Uh, oh, he didn't have the disposition for math. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my baby Boy had problems. Uh, Boy was made problems. To, uh... <laughs> what? What are colors never seen before by man? Oh my gosh! Right, that's it. That's Overly it. Overly sarcastic. Um, shout out to their channel. Yep, yep. So funny. Oh, here we go. Whether their purpose is aesthetic or functional. Further data required. Further data required. Your robot lady is asking good questions. And Aaron, the reason you're here is because you got a distress signal. I did get a distress signal here. And, and uh, it said it said to go here. This, yeah, this, this is the rendezvous point. Uh, I, ship is going to come and I feel pick like us we're up. Being, I feel like we're being catfished. Mm, that would be good. This is an Wait, catfished zone. by the aliens? Yeah, or whoever built this? yeah we got a distress signal. Very, I, I, I'm not seeing anything that looks like a crew of ours has stumbled around here. Should I jump in the sparkles? Do it. Always jump. So Always jump like... in the sparkles. Oh, floating. Uh, the first time I played this, I'm like, oh my god, I want to do that. <laughs> this does look like a good time. I like how we're still wearing our fins. Yes, you don't think you ever take them off. They have they're retracted into our feet a little bit. I was going to say, they're automatically retracting. Oh, That's the type I've of... I've uh, never thing noticed that. that. Oh, Fancy. okay. I don't, yep, see? Oh, look at that! It's very convenient. Huh. Again, future tech. Right? Future tech. Uh, and that's where they didn't put the flop, flop, flop sound effect in. What is this? Is that just like a pool? What's happening? It was just like a pool. There's even a... Can we swim in it? Yeah, there's even an exit. Look at that. We can always swim in pools. Pool. Okay, so that's, the, that's an exit to the external environment. That's what's happening there. Yes, I believe so. I love the echo. It's just like, what's going on? Flip, flap, flip, flap, flip, flap. Mm. I just made that joke. I like that joke. I also have nowhere, no idea where I'm going. Oh, this I... looks good. Yeah, big, mm, uh, No, that looks like a trap. Big glowy thing. It's a trap! Yeah, a big, a also, big glowy yeah. arch. Alien design. arch, there you go, scan it. It's an alien arch. <laughs> Thanks, Data scanner. Alien arch. <laughs> yeah, anytime you get that little uh, icon on the bottom right, that means that you're, you're looking at something that can be scanned. Or are close to something that can be scanned. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. What is that? It's an alien rifle. An alien rifle. rifle. By that, I get that they have the potential to be hostile. Already. Let's try upstairs. Are you limping? No, I'm just flip flopping. Although, it's uh. It's like a little skip step, a hitch in your step there. When you move at speeds. You got a purple tablet. I do love in sci fi when they talk about, like, Oh, it's a thing never before seen by man. It's a new element. Like that's not how elements 
Oh, so it's super radioactive and is going to detay in the next 0.5 seconds at a stretch. <laughs> they Ooh. could hypothetically say that, like, that it's... That says Doomsday device. Yep. Yeah. It's they a could ally. How do you yeah, ally. Wait, wait. Ally, wait. Compound. Ally. Yeah, yeah. How do we know... Question. But it's a doomsday device by scanning it. That, because that's <laughs> how it's labeled, Francis. That's how the aliens labeled it. Look, I understand episode one. I came out strong with a lot of hot takes. I was feeling very sassy that day. Bring, but bring the I, sass. I, Always bring the sass. Okay, but here's another hot take. I feel like labeling something a doomsday device requires <laughs> cultural information we don't have. At this juncture. Whatever do you mean? <laughs> All I know is that these aliens like aren't in for comfy chairs. <laughs> yeah, there's. Yeah, you see no furniture. Yeah, they aren't going in for a comfy aesthetic, for sure. Very brutalist. Ooh, scan the energy core. Although they, they, there is something about the the sort of lattice work here, it's even beautiful. though it's sort of very yeah, square. Yeah. And it's it's you know, it's not totally without artistry. But also, yeah, what do we know? Well, it's, it's a doomsday device. Yeah, I was trying do to we just know that? Because uh, it's like probably, probably a weapon of mass destruction? Doomsday device, Or here we did we Did we translate potential it energy. Back? Enough potential this... energy to destroy the entire planet. I mean, that could also just be an energy yeah. source. It might right? be. We don't know. A lot of predispositions. I'm just, yeah, okay. That okay. makes sense. I'm going to poke this thing. Yeah, don't no, poke it. Okay. okay. Take your don't finger poke in the thing. it. Poke the thing, I guess. I, I want to poke you, the you, thing. You know you yes. want to. It's famously a good to. idea when you wander into uh, the base of an enemy culture. Look, the character has a culture. Uh oh. Ooh. What's that? Uh oh. Oh, gosh. Oh. That's exactly what you want out of the things that you go into and poke, is them to poke you back. Translation reads. Warning, infected individuals may not disable the weapon. This planet is under quarantine. Okay, so this planet's under quarantine and I can't do anything about it. And apparently that was a weapon that you were unable to uh, disable. Are you infected? According yes. to was the that, thingy. Was, was that a COVID that, test? Yeah, yeah we failed our COVID is. test. Yeah. I'm also unsure where to go now. Uh, yeah, you're going oh. in the right direction now. Okay. Well. I feel... You, I, I, we have not been paying the most attention to the plot, if we're being honest. Uh, so at I'm one trying point... to try to piece some stuff together. Okay, we... tell us what you think. Alright. Uh, Francis's understanding of what's happened. Uh, we crash landed on this planet. Yep. Uh, we yep. built a dope base and have gathered a lot of resources and seen some cool fish. But yep. every time we get a distress signal from somewhere, we find nobody. Yes. Zero bodies. Yep. Lots of evidence that people were here at some mm -hmm. point, but no, but people no bodies. People who we also think we have, have crashed. Right. Increased. We have now stumbled across a um, alien matrix base, yes. and have seen something that could be used to blow on a planet and a rifle. And they declared that infected individuals could not disable the weapon. Let's, yep. you know, let's go out on a limb here and say maybe that's the um, Doomsday D20 that we found. It does look like a D20. Yeah, uh, if you scan yourself, it'll say something about uh, some kind of unknown, um, yeah, push F. Control right, with the other COVID test. So presumably we cannot. We have a bacterial infection. Detecting skin irritation Do and immune system yeah. response. Do we develop that? Is that new? That's new. Uh, that is, that is new. That is new, yeah. Did the when little you... stalk infect us? No. Uh, no. No, we had that before the stalk. Yeah, the environment infected us. If we recall from previous episode, we actually did run into some infected species out there. Also, you are thirsty, Aaron. Yeah. So we've also been like eating a lot be of some... infected things. Yeah, we got some Ciguatera going on. Vital Maybe. <laughs> Can you explain what that is for our listening audience? Or yeah. watching sure. audience? Um, that is a 
Um, is it a deer analogy? <sighs> it's a thing that you can potentially catch um, by eating a certain species of coral reef fish. I'm going to have it in excess. Um, and it will make you mildly sick. So if you're, you know, feeding yourself by spear gunning fish, be careful. We ate rainbow trout for dinner. We were delicious. Wait, oh. question. Would Tom Hanks have gotten that? In... Ooh. in Probably. Passed away. Yeah. Excellent. Not necessarily. Also, there's a little horrifying it's like, little. Like, uh, yeah, there's plenty of reef fish that don't head, have it. It's just jumpy, it's, so, it's, a, it's a toxin. Oh, I have scanned them apparently. That like naturally accumulates, and I've double checked myself here. Um, uh, it's made by dinoflagellates. Ooh, dinoflagellates. Um, and it it accumulates so in in reef fish, so that if you eat too much of that, uh, you can get sick. But also, uh, it's not in it's not everywhere, and it's not in all the fish. So. He could have presumably been fine. I mean, there are lots of people that uh, around Whoa. the world that support themselves on subsistence fishing from reefs. But they usually like cook them thoroughly, right? Sure, why not? I mean, yeah, sometimes people also do eat a lot of fish raw. I Be do careful love sushi. With your raw fish. No. <laughs> Oh, talked about. Uh, let's talk about freezing the uh, the fish versus cooking it, and how that uh, can kill the, the the bad stuff. Yeah, I've heard that's why uh, a lot of sushi is safer than uh... fresh fish. Yeah, because they they deep freeze less, it, and that parasites. would kill. Right, you can either cook it or you know get it to what 165 degrees or whatever that magic number is, or you get it down to very low temperature. Oh, so this is the island uh, we were exploring earlier. Erin would not eat sushi with me until uh, I explained that to her. And that was a fish fact I knew that she did. I just had taken a lot of biology Ooh. classes and learned a lot of things about parasites. So many parasites. Also, Ziguatera is not a thing that you can, like... It's, uh, cannot be destroyed by conventional cooking methods. Ah, there you um, go. So. Just gotta take your chances. How do you kill it? You don't. You consume it and then beat it. Yeah. So, yeah. You just you eat you eat the fish, and if mm. that fish has too much of that in it, you might get sick. Is there a way I can build up an immunity to it, like iocane powder? <laughs> Odorless, um, tasteless, dissolves instantly in liquid. You know, this is we're getting pretty far outside of my realm of expertise here. Francis, how come you don't know all these things? I don't know what I'm talking Well, why don't we go back to your realm of expertise and you tell us some shark facts. Right. I, uh, shark fact. I would like to point out, Aaron, that you are we're just walking by diamonds and that... I don't want diamonds. I want copper. Well, uh, you uh, can, uh, you, you just know... broke off it, the gold? You know, Aren't these, like, non-renewable resources? Don't they, like, disappear? That is correct. Yes, there is a limit. This is a... Fine! Limit there, <sighs> I never I said think... I was good at this game. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, there are a lot of them. I mean, you would be very hard pressed to run out. Um, I had a goal of utilizing every single resource in this game and building a uh, base or multiple bases to the point where it would make my computer very unhappy with me. That's a very achievable goal. Yeah, I didn't. I got like maybe a. Th Two thirds of the way of getting all of the resources and building up the base with that, and my computer already hated me. So I'm like, I don't want to push it. This makes me wonder if we should, uh, you guys should do a uh, let's play of Minecraft or something. It's not very nautical theme, but well, let's finish mm -hmm. this let's play before yeah, we right. start planning all of uh, our others. Is is there a plot in Minecraft? We asked this on a previous episode. We did, we did. The consensus. And the answer oh, is, no. the, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a resounding maybe. All I know is maybe. <laughs> That's right. Tell my wife I said hello. What makes a man go neutral? <laughs> now we're just quoting Zephyr again. Uh, Aaron, I'm gonna go get another drink. Do you want one? Please. I want one. All right. Yeah, well, bring me one, Francis. Uh, you want over a or, Sorry, Joel. All right. 
Uh, is that bottle of wine still good? Yeah, it is. Alright. Yeah, I'm not sure, Wait. uh... I thought this was the, uh, ran rendezvous spot. Joel says there's a button. For, for our, our listeners, the joke is that me and Andrew are many, many hundreds, if not thousands of miles away from Aaron and Joel, so Joel cannot, in fact, bring us a drink. Ooh. Break the laws of physics and space yes, time. Which we think is very inconvenient, and Joel should bring us drinks. This game has portals to other places. Why don't we have that now? I this want is that. a very pleasant looking beach. It is. Oh, this yeah. is the one we, uh, we were just. Uh... Yeah. yeah we did that. <laughs> Look, this alien monolith thing is clearly doing its. It really should get into ecotourism. It really oh, should. Yeah. It's got a bad business structure. You shouldn't be protecting doomsday artifacts. It should be charging me five bucks so I can rent a little uh, beach chair. Oh, or <laughs> beach chair. Yeah. If you have the local flora and fauna. Yeah, the little little plaques. Get back here. Ooh. Ah, yeah. scan it. No. Got away. Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure. That should have uh, triggered. Is it more timed? I don't think so. It said uh, just to come to the rendezvous place. Place logs. Wait, who do we have to reimburse? Oh, our company that um, was on the ship that crashed and we're stranded here just said uh, all the resources you find, including all the diamonds and gold, uh, belongs to us. <laughs> it's a, oh, it's a very fun trope. Wow. Uh, it's actually wow. pretty common in a lot of like sci-fi like this, like yeah. in Alien, I think, and the Alien trilogy or universe, they have a similar construct where it's like, you know, you m destroyed this precious cargo and and military technology this by killing all the aliens that were trying to you kill know, you. Uh, we're from a little transgov on the far side of Andromeda, and we have a saying there. There's no bad without the good, no good without the bad. Sounds like you tasted a bunch of the former. Yeah, I guess that so. only means you're they overdue a whole lot of yet. the latter. Yeah, so did, how did you get... Aurora, you didn't have a, uh, a beacon to take yeah, you to this location? I just kind of onto this, if I'm honest. Oh, okay, yes. There's, so at is, some point, you've got a radio message like... saying to Roddy View here. It's probably what know. just came up on the radio. We're now en route yeah. to your location. Look at this place in Nautica where I have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, that being said, you just went to a plot point, you know, so, blindly. Can, can I suggest, so. perhaps, that um, in my conspiracy theorist yes. Game of Thrones <laughs> theorizing brain, that I think um, future space chat GPT is falsifying radio communications Ooh. from outside the planet, that and we're not actually being rescued? Oh my god, can good that theory, be like... Can yeah. that be one of your next books? I can chalk it up. Yeah, you've already got at least two others, like, in the draft, or, I mean, draft, in the thinking about stage. So. Yeah, if there's any agents, they hook me up. My publisher closed. Aww. We're still selling books. Yeah, I believe your book was the last one published. Last one published, yeah. That's kind of a milestone. Yeah. It is a bad. And it was like it closed due to COVID. Like, like yeah, it it's was not like a yeah. When you were in the process of publishing, they were like, hey, we're not sure if this is gonna work out. Like we're 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 happy. Ooh, Ooh. Stasis, right? we're, we're happy. Yeah. We're happy to leave you, let you out if you yeah. want. And she was like, I'd actually rather publish with you. Yeah, I really not, wanted so. to say that I uh, did self publish. Right. And the idea of going back to square one was Oh yes, writing the book is the easy part. Publishing is the hard part. Anyway, this and is, writing uh... oh, yeah. is hard. As someone yes. who just yeah, I'm, I'm... a draft of her dissertation. Yeah, tell us about your dissertation. So, uh... Uh, you'll, you'll find out more, folks, when I uh, publish them officially. Chapter 1 is uh, in, in review. Uh, with a Journal of Applied Ecology, you can see uh, the larger structure that some of my work was part of, uh, published uh, in Nature. Ooh, catchy. Nice. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, absolutely. It came out uh, 2020. Um, 
just like pick a random that's tree and called, ask it? Uh, yeah, that's you, how that if works. If you Google, if you Google, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you can find it. The title of the paper is Global Status and Conservation yeah! Potential Research. I'm one of about ten bajillion authors. Oh no. What? So sad. What? Aaron, what happened? Aaron killed her sea moth. I didn't no! realize she was taking damage from that uh, thermal vent. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, did we kill our car? Yeah, we yeah. killed our car? So, uh, Aaron, you were no! about to, uh, 30 seconds remaining. You should probably go up. Yeah, go up. The... Also at... <laughs> Wait, look, look, yeah, look how quickly you go up. Look how right. quickly you go up. Yeah, Don't, from, hey, from folks, multiple folks, hundred meters. If you ever find yourself out of air at 200 meters, my advice to you is breathe water and die quickly. <laughs> Don't be there. <laughs> Don't do Probably... that. Right. Don't be in yeah. that situation in the first place. Don't, yes, absolutely. Don't ever be in that situation in the first place. But there is a certain point at which, uh, and this gets, if, if you read like memoirs and stuff of like Navy divers and um, people who dive off like submarines who do really intense saturation diving, first of all, wild, absolutely wild cowboy shenanigans. Um, Right, like skydiving. Yeah, there, there does is, become a point where you have to be like, fun. hey, I'm I'm picking between two. I could make a race to the surface and absolutely um, have so much gas come out of my bloodstream that it's like shaking a soda can, or I can drown. And one of those two deaths is probably yep. preferable to the other. Yep. Yeah. Uh, deep sea diving uh, is closer to being an astronaut than like skydiving. Skydiving is something people do for fun. I've done both. Well, uh, okay, that's, that's well, not deep, not deep sea diving. I haven't done the. Oh yeah, I've been skydiving twice. Really? What? I, I want to go skydiving. Yeah. And bungee. Yeah, it's. I um, and what happens when you uh, mix up nerd and adrenaline junkie? Uh -huh. A little bit. Um. Nice. So yes, I've been and I've been bungee jumping a bunch of times. Actually, if you're a thrill seeker, I actually recommend bungee jumping over skydiving. Really. For two reasons. One, there's a thing um, in bungee jumping where if you're, especially if you're doing it like over a body of water, you get a thing called the ground rush where there's a surface coming towards your face. <laughs> so you get, it's a little bit of an extra kick. Um, also, bungee jumping is gentler than skydiving. Really? Um, yes. I think about that, If you yeah. think about it. I think in of the, the jerking of like yes, going down and bouncing up. That's what most people think intuitively, right? Because they're thinking about this snap of an like elastic. But, but think about what happens when you stretch out an elastic. You're slowing down, right? It's decelerating, decelerating, decelerating as it's stretching, and then it starts to go the other way. Whereas when you're skydiving, a parachute will open, and suddenly that whole surface will catch all of the air, and it's a <laughs> as a sense. deceleration as you as you snap back. So if you're looking for, you know, you're easing in, you want high thrills, and also. You're Love trying to ease into, painter. yeah. If you go with a reputable person or a reputable place, both are really pretty safe. <laughs> Arguably safer than you would be statistically driving there in your car, right? That is true. We do often get into the cars and think yeah. nothing of it, but if there are thinking, more If you're thinking about a, like a risk mitigation crash. thing, right? Yeah, skydiving and bungee jumping are higher risk activities, but there's also an incredible amount of risk mitigation that happens. Sure. And a lot of safety nets, right? If you're a company that does this for a living, you can't kill anybody, otherwise we wouldn't be a company anymore. Yep. Most so, people uh, um, trying to risk mitigate would be better off taking cholesterol right. medication than not skydiving. Wait, so, what? Oh, I'm just Because um, more people are dying of like heart disease than skydiving. Mm. Yeah, but that's um, not scary. I don't know. Scary. Well, I think that's why it's fun. Exactly. It's fun. Heart you disease get it, so, is yeah. not fun. <laughs> no. Aaron won't even ride no, in roller I was coasters, talking about skydiving. So. Oh. Yeah. Skydiving is fun. We were just talking about what, what people are scared of versus what's more statistically likely to kill them. Oh. Yeah, those are yes. two very disparate things. Right. Right. My job is dangerous because I sit on my butt all day. So if I don't oh, wait. You know, actively uh, keep myself fit, then I'm going to die of blood pressure. Heart disease, blood yeah. Blood. We all are. Um, but the, yeah, but the thing is... Oh, you did? You yeah, died, speaking died. of dying. You died. 
but the thing is that like back, like a moron right that wasn't heart disease that wasn't heart disease. <laughs> translated broadcast. Uh, yes. So anyway, um, I do recommend those two things. But you're right. Uh, you're missing a message from aliens. Oh. Sharing subject locations with other agents. Oh no. That's not terrifying at all. What? I'm men sure they're fun. It's like a, it's they like just... a reverse men in black situation. Right? Yeah. They, they just want to share yeah. the good word. <laughs> um, Joel is a little bit correct, though. So the Aquarius underwater reef base, which is the um, underwater habitat that my university operates, is often used by NASA to train their environments for um, basically ex ex extreme environment training. So hey, can you live in an environment that is alien, and can you all work together in a small space? And that is so cool. Yeah, actively trying to kill you at all times, more so than gravity. I'm reliably informed though that it's it's not as fun to be on those missions because they make you eat, um, you know, food that's good for you. Mm. Mm, that does sound like no fun. Uh, Sorry. and uh, so they have to eat at the astronaut food is not as yummy as the food that. Uh, we eat, which is basically just like backpacking camping food. <laughs> yeah, little little, pou little pouches where you can add water. Uh, what are to, you um, talking about, Joel? They are not tasty. You've you've been eating the wrong MREs, my friend, because I've had some, some decent meals and I've had an MRE. Uh, not not the military MREs. Uh, if you but like, so w not not a sponsor uh, deal, but Mountain House. So basically, if you can buy these, like for like at REI or something, you can buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, not, basically dehydrated meals. Not, not, not and, like beef stroganoff issue. or yeah, yeah. beef oh. stroganoff or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the reason the government issue ones or the NASA because they're like, oh, there's only supposed to have this much fat or this much, you know. Right, salt. right, right. That's like you know. Um, some, some and uh, yeah, better old really, if we were if we were thinking about the nutrition that we need. You do need a lot of calories if you're diving all day, but um, yeah. what we don't need is that all of these camping meals do have is because they assume you're backpacking, so they assume you're like sweating. Ah. Oh. Um, which, if you're underwater, uh, spending uh, all day uh, in salt water, you don't need right. as much sand. You don't need that much sand. Like, you know. But it makes it yummy, so I don't regret it. And yes, I'm gonna die young uh, because of those food choices, maybe. But you know what? Worth it. I regret nothing. I would rather I'd rather die a couple years earlier than like not eat yummy food. Well, you're only yeah. as young as you feel, so I plan on dying. I plan on living forever. <laughs> Thanks to uh, denial, I'm immortal. That is correct. <laughs> Let's see how many Futurama quotes we can get into this. All right, I need to go get some uh, lubricant and also find a whole bunch of. Uh... Oh, is it time for? Is it time for a that's what she said joke? Uh, we had to we had to we... get those out last time, so I was about yeah, to Yeah, I think we made a couple not... of those jokes last time in regards nah. to the same item. <laughs> we should just come up with a new name for it called engine oil or something, and that way we won't be tempted. Ooh, you can make a compass. But it is lubricant because, like... I mean, it's, it's true. I guess we could say that, but then that's... We gotta stop there. Oh, and, uh... Oh, you're doing that to, to build another Seamoth, right, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say because oh god, I have a sea. Oh man, I can't wait till you get the big submarine. I know. Oh, so there's this now. In addition to surviving, presumably indefinitely on this planet, we have to avoid uh, alien agent Some men in black. Kind of agent men in black thing. Some kind yeah. of alien, and it's quarantined. It's a whole thing. Sure, um, but maybe it's friendly. Yeah, I'm sure it's friendly. Let's just go say hi. Yeah, let's. I wouldn't have been. Remember that scene in ET where they quarantined ET? Mm -hmm. Oh man, I don't like ET. That was scary. That was yeah. That was real and scary. Sad. It was Super real sad. sad. Yeah. If you didn't Stop cry at that scene in ET, you're not human. Yeah, oh, I I, e ET e is a oh, yeah. is a good movie, but it's not a movie I enjoy. Like, um, I do remember seeing that for the first time as like a little kid, and that scene where those agents come in in those suits and mm -hmm. he's screaming like not to take ET away. I yeah. remember being so terrified. That was so scary. 
And it was like, and because I was a little kid, you couldn't quite articulate why it was scary, you know? Yeah. Scary, it wasn't like, ah, oh, that's a big monster, I know that that's scary and that's why I'm scared. It's emotional damage. Uh, it was, yeah. <laughs> Like, ah, oh, this is existentially horrifying in a way I'm not right. equipped to deal with yet, because I'm seven. <laughs> take, take three D6 uh, psychic damage. Um, uh, the first Ooh, movie that I this can... is our ship, right? Parts of our ship, yes. The first well, movie I that I remember ship. actually crying to was West Side Story, because I didn't know at the time that it was Romeo and Juliet. So if I had known that from the front, you know it's gonna happen. But if you <laughs> don't know it's Romeo and Juliet, you expect it to have a happy ending. Because movies typically have happy endings. Oh. And it doesn't have a happy ending. No, it doesn't have a happy ending. Really? That was, how young were you watching West Side Story? Uh, 11 or 12. Yeah. It's a great movie, that's, though. That's that means, when... hold on, hold on, I call BS because that means you didn't cry at Mufasa. Uh, you know, I wasn't a big Lion King guy. I was, I was a lot he more was a toy into Toy Story kid. Yeah, Toy Story. Um, oh shoot, that Robin Hood where they're all animals. Oh uh, man, with Maid Marian as the fox. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, we had we had like about a we had half of the Disney movies, uh, I don't have and the ones yet. that we didn't own, like, I have very few memories of. Like, I saw them once or twice. Aladdin? We had Aladdin. Watched that one a lot. Mm. I remember being freaked out as a kid. A lot of the movies that, the, the cartoon movies that bothered me always had to do with things that were not appropriately sized. So, like, Thumbelina. Yeah. Yeah. Me out. yeah also, scary. there's some weird consent stuff in Thumbelina oh, that, of course. I, that scared me. When I was like, why, why are they telling her to get married? Uh, and that I remember, I remember being really upset by that, by Thumbelina and by. Um, was it? Did you ever, I did you ever see uh, Fern Gully? Oh man, no, I remember with I didn't that. that yeah. I didn't oh, own it. Uh, it's, yeah. I mean, I've seen it since, but not when I was young enough to like. Robin Williams. Have, and uh, I don't know. I think. Tim Curry. Tim I think Curry. I had an un yeah. yeah. I think I had an uncanny valley thing as a kid where I just didn't like stuff that was incorrect size tales. That's because okay. I remember so a similar thing with like certain scenes in Alice in Wonderland. Um, oh yeah, that's one. Yeah. That freaked me out. Oh, I tell you the movie that 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 frightened me as a child. Return to Oz. Oh yeah, of course. Wow. That, is that just stuff was insane. Up. That's just straight up horror. I don't, I, I don't know that I've ever seen that. Oh, I mean, it it's still frightening. It, right? It would scare an adult. It is just straight With up the terrifying. guys on rollerblades and long, oh, weird are. arms and I the had... pumpkin head dude. Ugh. Oh, so much. We actually watched a really interesting breakdown on why that movie is, like, the scariest movie for kids because of, like, all the different things it touches on and whatnot. But, yeah. I do think good. different things tend to freak out adults. Yes, and I think right. a great yep. example of this is um, a Christmas Carol, mm. specifically the best adaptation of a Christmas Carol, the Carol Muppets? which is oh, undeniably yep. the Muppet Christmas Carol. Okay, okay good. good. We can yeah. stay friends now. We can all be friends. <laughs> we can all be friends. Hands are about um, to get thrown. If you're, I'm sorry, that is the best. Uh, you're objectively wrong if you think there's a better adaptation of the Christmas Carol. <laughs> there can be other good ones, but Muppets is well, the best. The, the the best Muppet movies are the ones where you have serious actors taking the role seriously yeah. with Muppets, such as right. uh, not just Muppet Christmas Carol, but Muppet Treasure Island oh. with throwback Tim Curry. Yes, that's. I love how we're talking about this game that we're watching. I know. Listen yeah. to uh, marine biologists hey. talk about random movies that have right. nothing to do with marine biology. Uh, before we get retracked, just to my point, um, the. I was really freaked out as a kid by the Ghost of Christmas Future because he was a big hooded He's mentor. Scary dude. Scary dude. As an adult, I find the little girl who is the, the wet for dry puppet. Oh yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Much more disturbing because uncanny there's an uncanny valley, valley thing happening. Yeah. Oh yeah. She was always scary. Serious uncanny little... valley. Well, same thing with like the Dark Crystal, right? Like. The Skeksis are, are kind of weird looking and can be scary, but like 
Gelflings always freaked me out. Oh my gosh. I have to say, I only ever saw the uh, the new the new adaptation on Netflix, and not the. the other. This is what it. This is the difference between growing up in the '80s, like early early '80s, and like the late '80s, early '90s. Is that there was a lot of stuff that you were exposed to as a kid that was terrifying. Vibrant. There was this. Oh man, there was this cartoon that I do not remember what the name of it was, but it was about some sort of like lost toy or lost like doll or or it was like a rag doll type thing and it was you know got thrown under water it got into like this garbage pile and like it was just super disturbing that does and that upsetting. was that I'm was for children the description of that oh yeah it was like looking for its mom and like yeah oh, there we go. Oh, okay, so now we're going to go to the definitely again. legitimate pickup and rescue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but we're, we're done. Game's over. This fine. Yeah. 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 And this is definitely not uh, a... Definitely not a catfish. Definitely not a catfish. Alien. Definitely not a trap. I can yeah. promise you it's definitely not a trap. Right. Uh, Aaron, how hey, are you going to be able to... Huh? <laughs> Are you going to be able to rebuild your uh, CMOS? Uh, yeah, provided not I can if, get... Not, uh... We got a ride to catch in 40 minutes. Right? Yeah, what do you need that for? Because it's cool to have, and maybe you want to come back to this planet after you get yeah. rescued. No, right. the company's going to take it all out anyway. Because <laughs> this is a dystopian hellscape we found Welcome ourselves Welcome to in. the future of corporatism. Yeah. Turns out there's an even later stage of capitalism. <laughs> How is this You're not a right. later stage? How is this not like current stage? Like this is like that was the joke. That was the oh, joke. Sorry, that was sorry, kill it. I killed it. I killed the joke. Oh man, you wanna, you wanna I, uh, was, that was a weird. Uh... Leave me alone. I want my cover. Oh. Good, good sci-fi oh, capitalism. Hold on, wait. Can you look at it that again? He's got. It looks like a. It's sort of got a like a sawtooth my cover! thing going on. Give me. Oh my god, he's that animal is... He is. I think he's that animal is really it. cute. Isn't he darling? Look at his uh, four limbs. There aren't a lot of... Uh, do you think he's more of a reptile? Sea reptile a la... Uh, what you he call does look him? a bit... Um, oh god, what's? it's not actually a dinosaur. It's in, like an ancient marine reptile. So I'm trying to remember the name of. I always, I always got. Uh, you have thirty seconds left in your air, by the way. I want this um, tooth. Hey, you got it. I always got like a weird seahorse vibe from it, like just from like just that long snout like morphology. Right well, also in like the back ridge area. Mm, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, just the the long snout I was getting, and the sort of the little um, pectoral fins I was getting a sawfish vibe. Hmm. Again, I love, love the uh, designs in this game. It's just, it's, this oh, is really, it's really gorgeous. And I, I think um, I might have come out a little bit too hot in my takes. Whatever. Um, you can, you can have one, serious complaints. It's fine. It's not. There weren't even complaints. I was just having a take to have a take because uh, it was fun and I was feeling sassy. Welcome um, to but this this game is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, this game is so pretty. And I love the uh, the animal designs and types. Uh, you want a good game with uh, sci-fi capitalism? Uh, Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds. It's a hilarious oh. game. On yeah, I've I've heard of that one. That's the one where it's like, um, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, corporations instead of governments. So it's. It's didn't both somebody, hilarious and a very good game. Didn't somebody uh, make a I really mean, funny music video for that? Stupendium. Uh, I, I love yes, that. Yes, yes. That's the one. I got a shout out Dimension 20. Um, their Starstruck campaign, which is based off a series of graphic novels called Starstruck Odyssey. Um, that was actually done by the the DM's mother. What? Lee Mulligan's, yeah, Brendan Lee Mulligan's mom, the DM Brendan Lee Mulligan of internet fame. Um, his mom is a is a creative person and created, yeah, it was 
part of a creation of a series of graphic novels that became the basis for their sci-fi season. It's <laughs> fun. Um, and yeah, sci-fi, like, I've never been in a game of D&D usually, like, hey, the gold management and the reset, that's the least interesting part of it, but this whole game was structured around, like, these are down on their luck, like, space people. <laughs> so I was, I was like, I've never been so stressed out about fake money in my life. Mm. That's... Lead, glass... It's a, it's a great, it's a great, um, sorry, I mean, all of those Dimension 20 things are amazing, and I'm... It's my favorite TV. I'm the biggest fan. Glass, lead, flag of steel. I got any flag of steel already made? Nope. Counting for flag squares. Flag of steel? I'm sorry. Is it <laughs> plastic steel or Titanium. what? Titanium. What oh, I'm, I misspoke. This is flag of steel. Flash steel? Plast steel? Plast steel. Titanium so plus, plus steel. what is it? I Lithium. wrote a book. English g does words. Lithium. Is is plagiosteel real or is it like unobtainium? I think it's like unobtainium, but I don't look it up. I think it's meant to be a portmanteau of plastic and steel. That's plastic steel, a, a composite thing. of fiberglass and steel, patented by automobile manufacturer. Blah -de blah. First used. Uh, plasteel. Uh, it's also in Dune, but it's also a real thing. So. Oh man, you want to talk about uh, sci-fi ecology? Dune. Where's my uh? Oh, Dune. Uh, your mobile thing is next to your initial um escape pod. So I was, I was on um, on rum Fla not rum flagons on uh marine science conservation happy hour with. Chris and Smash, and we talked about You mean the... Dr. Chris Parsons and Dr. Scarlet Smash of uh, internet fame? Yes, and glory. And we were talking about the different planets that were in Star Wars and how, oh. like, like, uh, you know, certain planets just didn't quite make sense ecologically wise. Um... A, de a fully desert planet totally makes sense, but the fact that it has, like, oxygen-producing capabilities feels weird. Yeah, but... well, I think the idea is it used to be green, but now yeah. it's a desert. But well, still, for a, for a biosphere... Oh, he's talking about Tatooine. Uh, well, oh, yeah, uh, no. My apologies, I was thinking about both. Carry on. No, no both. I, 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 was, I was talking about both. Like, both Tatooine and Arrakis are feel weird from an eco from a from a biosphere perspective because like you I, I don't know how you would be able to maintain a climate that can regulate to, oxygen. You would have to do a little bit of sci fi hand waving where you would assume some sort of um primary productivity that didn't look green. In other words, uh Stuff that makes oxygen, right? So things that photosynthesize are plants and also algae, right? In fact, the majority, um, by a lot of calculations, of our algae is produced by things that live in the ocean. Um, but well, I mean, you could you could pretend that there are there's some sort of uh, some photosynthesis, some some of that happening in just like microorganisms under the sand. I, I also and feel the same why, way. That's why, that's why you'd have to like filter. Like, those big sand organisms have to eat something. And they're well, big, so I would assume they're closer to like a whale. They eat like... everything, is the answer to that. And they poop spice. Spoilers for anybody who has it. pooping buddy! Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But I would, I would it would be more nutritious for them to feed like a, a, like a, a blue whale, right? That is eating small things rather than eating higher level predators <laughs> because there's not high enough enough high level large things to maintain an organism that big you gotta eat a bunch of small things yeah well they have all of the miners that they eat um <laughs> and and all the other things yeah. um but I like, like I, to think that they're filter feeding through sand and i'm not using the dune thing specifically because i'm not it don't have enough knowledge of that universe 
to say, but I, you know, stuff like the, um, uh, what's the, oh god, what's the big sand creature in, in Tatooine? Oh, yeah, the, the, the no, the, the thing that yeah. lives in the hole. Yeah, oh, the thing, no, the, 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 um, you shall spend your, yeah, Sarlacc yeah, pet, thank you. That's Sarlacc, it. thank you. Sarlacc. Yeah. You shall die. Thank you. End your days suffering for eternity in the depths of the Sarlacc pit. All right, will you be digested over a course of a thousand years? Uh, Thank spoiler. You. Yeah, yeah. So so for, keep... for the Disney Plus shows, he did it. <laughs> what? Wow. So what's what's funny is that like before the Disney shows came out, what's it, Patton Oswald had this whole thing on Parks and Recreation <laughs> that I literally that. Yes, called yes. that out. Yeah. <laughs> And part of me is a little angry that, like, okay, so are you just gonna give him writer credit on that? Or are you gonna they just like super should? He also he also claimed that it was <sighs> it was gonna go into Garden Guardian of the Galaxies universe, right, and Marvel yeah, universe. Yeah, he even yeah. had all these other crossovers. And... <laughs> yeah, and that's how it's in the MCU. Right. Which is only a hop, skip, and a jump away from the truth because they are both IPs now owned by Disney. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a possibility. It could happen. Did uh, galaxy far, far away? Long, what long is the ago. what is the over under on a another um on another uh, holiday special? They <laughs> can't do worse. For, for, we can only hope. For Guardians, for Guardians of the Galaxy, or for no, Star Wars? they did Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special with uh, I know it when it's Kevin Bacon. Great. <laughs> it was so good. That was it is great, but, but it's Guardians. pretty fun. Uh, but good. no, for instance, if you are blissfully unaware of the uh, of the uh, I know of it. Star I Wars, haven't seen uh, it. Oh, it's painful. And no, hey, by the way, please no spoilers, because um, I have not, I'm not caught up on. Um, I haven't watched anything of the Mandalorian. Like I'm be here at zero couple, and not few episodes behind minutes. on the Mandalorian. Yeah, you still have uh, 28 minutes before yeah. something interesting. I don't, I don't know why I thought that though. That's not how this works. Yeah, I think actually, even if you let the countdown reach zero, it doesn't happen without you. When you show up, the interesting thing happens. It's fine. Pretty interesting. Can we go up to the surface and look at the... I guess it's a moon or other planet. I always found that very pretty. Yeah, I wonder how uh, There's two. a binary there, there system... There was another body, though. I thought yeah. I saw. Oh, no, there is. Yeah, there's, there's, another there's body. definitely yeah. one moon. And then there we go. Is, two moons? Is this a three-body problem or a two-body problem? That's no... Uh, no? I'm clear if that's a... If we're... That's a another planet and we're doing a little do -si -do, do and really then crazy moon. things to the uh the seasons and tides. stuff yeah uh, yeah the tides three body problem. isn't that philip k dick or am i uh... no three body pop uh th about the it... second variety uh is uh i always mix it i always mispronounce her name lou or l-i-u-c-i-x-i-n that is her name right. Is it a book? Yeah. Super uh, awesome science fiction novel. I've heard of the three body problem, but I. You know what's a really good science fiction novel is a uh, memoir of a mad scientist. Really? <laughs> I've heard great things. I've never heard of it. Oh, it's yeah. It's written by some schmuck, but uh, good book. Good book. Yeah, I won't uh, attempt to pronounce that either. But... You know, what did you just catch? Oh, uh, it's a fish that I can turn into water. It's a membrane fish, and you filter uh, water through it. Which sure. is not a horrifying way to use a fish at all. Yeah, right? Waterboarding I mean... a fish to death. Ironically. It's not ironic, it's just me. <laughs> Futurama reference, bam! I the like use of the... words expressing something other than their literal intention. <laughs> now that is irony. Wow. I love that episode so much. It's so good. I love that show so much. Yeah, I'm really not sure how I feel about them coming back again. As much as I enjoy that show, you just... Sometimes it's better to let something die and still be good than just keep coming back. 
100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Something I do really enjoy about this game is uh, how different animals exist in different biomes. The, uh... The pseudo, uh... Manatee creatures only exist in the shallows, and those, uh... Shark things that I'm using to get teeth only exist in... Oh? The kelp forest. Magnetite. So there's no, like, uh, migration or, like... There is, but we go... can do that later. Oh. oh yeah. That's a secret we'll need for later. Definitely when we move to another planet, because this rescue is happening in 24 minutes is super real and not a trap. Definitely Absolutely. super real and definitely not a trap. Yeah, for sure. Silver ore, titanium. Huzzah! Who's gonna water our garden when we're away? It waters it, itself. Yeah, it's a self-watering. With ocean magic. I'm gonna put it on this one. At a certain point, you can get a desalinator, which is like oh. solves all of your water and I, salt problems. I want a yep. desalinator so bad. I like having the uh, nuclear reactor. Too. Yeah, I want to make a bioreactor. A bioreactor. Let's see. I need lubricant. Going once, going twice. I'm proud of us. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we were talking about Brendan Lee Mulligan earlier. Um, he does an amazing bit on, um, I believe it's Game Changer. He does a uh, auctioneer, the guy who does the, you know, oh, he's slowly becoming right. aware. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Experiencing an existential cri ex uh, existential crisis. Someone pronounced existential. it. Existential. Thank you. Yes. Wait, hilarious. is the existential crisis that he like realizes about the fourth wall? No, 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 he's no, just, no. He's yeah. just having like a. Uh, he's having like, a. Oh, I'm not happy in my marriage! Blah, 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 blah. And it, <laughs> it just goes on. It's very. He also impressive. does the one where it's an an MTA announcement where the train is becoming. Yes! yes! Oh my gosh! Yes, that is a good one. Look, one day if we you will guys be famous are enough experiencing to get him. the right? best thing on the internet, which is any content produced by a uh, bop out, do that. This, yeah. We're not sponsored by them, but we would love for them to know we exist so that we can meet them. Oh my gosh, please cross over with us. We love you. <laughs> we got the podcast. It's real good, I swear. Right? When are they going to show up at Awesome Con? Come to Awesome Con, see our stupid faces live. Oh, and Andrews. See yeah, my stupid nice. face I'm live. A... I'm so sad that, like, oh. I. I I'm wanted sorry, to go. We probably won't be there either, Andrew. Yeah. yeah, we should. Again, we should like. I like if I was more of a betting man. No, if I was more eager to rely on the kindness of strangers, we could look at like, you know, crowdfund everybody getting to there. But no, that there's other things to donate money to. Mm. You put in a lot more planter boxes than I did. I like plants. I have this problem in real life, too. Oh, uh, you and me both. Yay, we're gonna get rescued!